Hi, welcome back to ODE and to another Friday Night Pen Thoughts. And today it is episode number 22. And Lisboa, 17 de dezembro de 2021. So, first of all, welcome. Welcome to another video. I'm trying to make this and to get this on time online. So if you are watching it, I hope I already published the Diamine Inkvent Calendar video for today and this will come right after that video. So today uh, I, I decided to make this video. I, I'm, I'm a, I don't have much free time now so it's getting impossible. All the Diamine Inkvent calendars are making me crazy because it, they, they are hard to do it to do but um, I, I think I need to make other videos and these Friday Night Pen Thoughts are the videos I enjoy the most doing. So I decided I had to fit some time to do it. So we will start as usually by showing you the pens for today. Pens for today. And this is a little crazy. This nib is really broad, let me see, yes, bleed through, it was expected. So, the pens that I have for today is this new edition, the Lamy Dialogue CC in white. I got this pen from Apple Boom as a loan for review and I think it is really an interesting pen, different from the regular Lamy Dialogue. So, this is the Lamy Dialogue CC with a broad gold nib and the ink it has inside is a diamine as much most of my pens have diamine inkvent calendar 2021 number 13 ruby blues and I don't think you can see any sheen or anything in this in this uh, Muji paper but it's holding better than I thought so we have this nice gold nib too broad for me I don't like this kind of nibs usually but it is for review it's not mine so there's no problem with that the other pen I have here is a cross pen and so this is the cross Townsend medalist with a fine steel nib and this nib looks really nice it has a very deep engrave it, it's, it, it really looks nice and the ink it has inside, of course, another one is Diamine Inkvent Calendar. You already saw these pens very recently on, if you are watching also the Inkvent Calendar videos, uh, you've watched these pens recently. I know that not everyone enjoys uh, ink videos. So, I guess many of you that are watching today did not watch those videos, but I showed this pen. So, it has the ink number 10, which is called Peach Punch. Now, I, I'm, I'm hoping, I say this every time, I'm hoping I, uh, not to make a very long video because it's Friday, I'm really tired, I could not record this in advance, so... Just 
talking a little bit about some stuff and I hope next year I can make these kind these Friday night pen videos more regularly and in a better way. So let's talk about the pens I received since the Friday night pen thought episode number 21. And I did receive three pens. And the three pens came from Apple Boom for review. One of those is this. Now you already saw it, the Lamy Dialogue CC. This one has the interesting feature. It is uh, shorter than the Lamy Dialogue 3. It has the same twist mechanism, but this one doesn't have anything that indicates you if you really close the pen or not, but you have a kind of uh, a felt click, not a click that you can hear, but you can feel it when the pen is in the position, when the nib is in position. And it has this kind of a rose gold um, roll stopper instead of a clip, so there is no clip here to mess if, with your fingers if you don't like that. And it has this rose gold uh, kind of a, a chip shaped uh, shape. Then I also received the Lamy, also from Apple Boom, the Lamy Ideos, which is the new, or Ideos, which is the new Lamy pen. It is a new Lamy model, uh, made of metal and it is all triangular you can see it has this kind not really triangular kind of a uh, drop shape even the cap and the clip is on one of the sides of the drop so it's it's kind of an interesting pen it has the same nib as the ion so i will be doing a review on that one also soon lamy ideos and finally, I also received another pen that I didn't ink yet, I need to do it. It is this pen, which has lots of glitter, and it is a Pelican. So this is the pen that was released this year, and it is... Oops, I forgot that. This is the Pelican. M200 Golden Barrel. So it is an interesting pen, but in some way a little strange. It seems lighter and the plastic doesn't seem to be the same. It's, it's kind of strange, but it makes sense for them to make a glittery pen for a glittery ink. So we will see how it performs on that very heavily glittered ink, in my opinion, but we'll see that uh, soon for the review. Now, we will go for the next videos. So, what has been happening so far, or recently? I've been doing a lot of um, die mining vent calendar videos. I, I'm making one video each day. I got this earlier, I decided to go in advance and I could complete two videos way in advance. But then life got in the way and I'm doing a video each day to get them ready for that night. So it's... <laughs> It, it's very, it's a lot of work and it takes a lot of time, so... But it is something that, in a way, I like to do, so... Okay, that's it. But it, it's been hard to have that, so most of my videos recently have been those videos of the, of the calendar. I also had the videos with the, the unboxing of these ones and the 
and the review of the Platinum Glamour. But it's not enough to have the separate thing about previous videos, but we're talking about the next video. So what we what will we have? We'll have until the Christmas day, we'll have the Diamine Inkvent calendar daily reviews. But Meanwhile, I'm thinking also of making a collection overview of my sterling silver pens. I'm not sure if it will be soon or later next year. I'm not completely sure. I want to make a video about Christmas gifts, like self-gifts. Um, some people get some promotions on the end of the year, or they get some extra money, or some special money prize at the work, something like that. And sometimes people have some extra money to spend on pens, and I'm, I will make a video about what can you get for yourself. I think it may be interesting. I will make, I expect, the unboxing of my birthday Christmas present pen that I talked in the last Friday night pen thoughts and some people tried to guess which pen it was and only one person guessed on the comments and then I also wanted to make a video that I usually make in the end or in the beginning of the month which is the pens from November, so the pens that I received in November and I didn't have the time to do it. I'll try to make it maybe tomorrow. And I also thought about making um, the video of the pens for December, although the month is past its half, and also the top pens of the year. So I still have lots of videos that I'm planning. In the end, maybe I will not be able to do most of them, but these are my expectations. If you think about a video that you wish you could see because you find it interesting, please let me know and I may try to work on that. I don't really know if I can fit a lot of stuff during this month. It's being uh, it, it, it's be, the, the advent calendar is taking so much time from me that I'm not sure if I can fit more videos and in a way that I'm thinking if there is an advent calendar next year maybe even if I buy it maybe I will not make these daily videos it it's really, really a lot of work. Or I can organize myself. This year I couldn't because we returned back to work and stopped working from home. If I can get organized, I may record all the videos in advance and so I have a more quiet time. But who knows? Only next year we'll be able to know that. Now, as I told you, I don't think this video will be as long as usual. Let's go for the next section, and it is the Uncommon Pen of the Day. And it will be a Caveco. It is a pen that I, sh uh, that I showed in this video, in one Friday Night Pen Thoughts, as a pen that I received, because I bought it, but uh, I didn't talk about it as an unusual fountain pen. It is this black thing. So, which pen, how is this pen called? I think it has ink inside right now. Let me see. The Caveco Eyedropper 1910. So, what is the Caveco Eyedropper 1910? It is a fun pen and it's quite uncommon because it is a limited edition. I'm not sure if you can see a lot. Here it says Caveco. Mm. Maybe you can't. Caveco, there, Caveco 579. It has this chasing, it is a pen made of ebonite. 
So it is an interesting material to have. It is a very fine pen. It has a serial number there that I cannot read with this lighting. And it has a push fit cap, quite tight. And here you have the pen. I got this pen pretty inexpensively, less than the cost of its gold nib. And it is quite a nice pen, very thin. And it reminds us the vintage pens. Uh, this pen is inspired in a vintage model from Caveco, which was an eyedropper. However, this pen is called Eyedropper 1910, as an homage to that, but it really is a cartridge converter pen. And that's something that I like. I don't enjoy eyedropper pens. Some people try to convert all the pens they have into eyedroppers, I do the opposite, I try to convert my eyedroppers <laughs> into uh, cartridge pens, and so this one really fits for me. It's kind of interesting and almost ironic that the pen that they call eyedropper is not really an eyedropper pen, and they also advise you not to eyedropper it because the, the threads may not seal well, so it is an interesting thing. The, the nib is the same nib as a Caveco Sport, same size, but this one is the gold nib of uh, an older version that has the nib size. I don't know if you can see there. There is something here over the nib. Let me try to clean it and show it to you again. Please focus. The size of the nib is there. It's that M written in cursive inside a circle. So this was the, the older version of these nibs and it is nice. It is quite rare because it is a limited edition and it is a fun pen. Very light, very thin. It's not the kind of pen that I usually enjoy and it goes into the, the uncommon pen of the day because it's not common to see this pen uh, and it's not common to see a modern pen with such a vintage look and this is something that I like a lot about Caveco. I always talked about this, Caveco goes for uh, versions of older pens that I really enjoy. I have here an older pen, it's not a Caveco, but you can see there is also some sh some chasing on the on the hard rubber very similar but this one is very heavily discolored i'm not sure if this can be safe and there you have a little bird and this is a cow pen but this one is not a slip cap, it is a threaded and it is a lever filler. And you can see here the shape of the breather hole, which is a heart shape. The nib is a little bit uh, misaligned, as, as you may see or not. I'm having trouble to focus. But when you write Believe me, everything goes a little bit to its place and you can write with it because it is kind of flexible nib. It doesn't matter if the times are not perfectly aligned because with just a gentle pressure on the paper, they get aligned again. So it works. It should be this color, but it is kind of this because it is discolored. So it is a cow pen, very interesting vintage pen. And when you look at Caveco, you can understand why this one is really a replica of a, an older pen. So this is the uncommon pen of the day. It is a pen you will not see every day and it's not a pen for everybody also. So it's very specific. And now, let's go for one of those longer topics today. The first one is... The name of it is kind of the same as the in the last video. And it is... Loving... Not fountain pens. Writing. 
instruments and other stuff or and what about other stuff I made this kind of question last video when I talked about books and I showed my favorite writer but today I'm showing you another favorite thing two favorite things of mine so this will go a lot off topic because we are not talking about fountain pens but an another thing that I kind of collect because I enjoy I don't collect very actively so I don't get every one that comes out but I really enjoy and I'm talking about Victorinox knives with this Alox finish, which I find very interesting. They are releasing special editions every year, and since a few years ago I started collecting them. And I started collecting them because one day at the flea market here in Lisbon, I went there and I bought this one for 10 euros. It is a red one with the old cross, and what I mean by the old crosses, it has this cross which was the vintage, kind of vintage logo instead of the current logo and I got this for 10 euros, it is quite used but all the, the tools are in pretty good shape so I bought it, 10 euros, and I thought it was interesting and I started buying a few more so I started buying these special editions each year and I show them sometimes here on the channel when I make the unboxing videos I use them to open the boxes so there are lots of different colors and I don't know the correct order for them so but 2021 2020 these ones have the inside of the logo in uh, the same color as the as the knife so 2019 2018 these ones are called pioneers because of the tools they have this one is a pioneer x because it has a scissor this is a farmer but I know maybe you're not into knives so I won't spend too much time talking about them but I find really this I th really find them very funny I like to use knives since a very young age I remember one day my sorry let me oops wrong way let me just zoom out a little bit one day I I was at school and my maybe I was 12 and my grandfather gave me a, a knife pocket knife and I found it very fun and I you I'm using knives since that time because I really enjoy them I always bring knives with me this one goes always with me in my in my backpack so you can see I have a few, not many. I also have a... Um, how is it called? Mini Champ, I think, the, the one which is very small with the, also in silver color. I don't have it here today, but I also have it. And I have this one, which I think it's gorgeous. gorgeous. It is a special um, edition for for the winter. I think it was for, for last year. And also this one that you have seen in my ink reviews because I like to use them to make the swatches. So I have a few. I'm, as I told you, I'm not collecting them actively. So this one have, is a very nice blade. The other ones have a kind of a smaller blade. Some are dirty with glue because these are the knives with which I open the package that I receive with pens. So these are my knives that I enjoy. I also have the ones with the plastic scales instead of these Alox, which are aluminium, and I think knives are a fun thing, and as far as I could understand, there are lots of other pen users that all also enjoy knives. So, again, as many times in these videos, what I will ask you is, and what about you do you enjoy 
knives. And now I will have to zoom in a little bit to show you the next item. So, another thing that I do enjoy is photography. So, I have some cameras. I can't say that I collect cameras, but I have too many. And I'll show you only a few because this is about pens, not about cameras. And let me show a few of them to you. This is one of this is one of the of the ones that I find very interesting. It is a very let me turn this into the auto exposure because I think it will be easier to see it. This is a Rolleiflex K2, I think. And it is a vintage one, it will make a lot of noise opening the this hood. And this is how you can watch what you let me put this magnifying glass down and this way you can see what you want to to show you it's not very easy to see but let me point there and there is my light umbrella it's not easy to see so this is a very old camera this is from the 1930s it is very beat up, but it's very fun. I can use it to shoot with film, which is something that I really like. And this pen is a, this <laughs> this camera is amazing, and it has something that I really enjoy. It has this crank that I need to move to go with the with the film with the with the film inside. You can see there if the film is okay. It's not. It doesn't have any film inside now. But this is the way you can use them. It's very nice to make that movement. It is a camera that I find fun. The lens are not perfect anymore. So this is a kind of camera that I use especially with long expired film just to try some different stuff. Another camera that I enjoy, and this, I think these are two, my two favorite brands, although I have a couple more cameras, is this one. This is a Nikon, as we say here, or a Nikon, not sure. This is Japanese, so maybe it's not Nikon, it's Nikon. Um, and this is the Nikon F3, which is my one of my professional cameras. It is very nice, it is loaded with film. I love this Ilford Delta 3100. So it is very, you can photograph with it in the streets now in the winter, almost by night. So I've, I love this camera. I think it's very sturdy. I like it a lot. It's more compact than this one because this is an SLR, this is TLR. And this is quite heavy and it has a very nice design. I really enjoy it. Another camera that I like, and let me grab it. And I like it because I like uh, the square format, which is this one. Is this beast. And this is a Zenza Bronica S2A also has that crank to advance the film. It also has this kind of hood. Make a, it, it makes a lot, lots of noise to work, even to, to fire, the, the to shoot the, a photo. It makes lots of, of noise. Just listen to this. Also, it has this hood. It has this cap there. And it is a very, very good camera. I really enjoy it. It's so heavy. It's around two kilos, so really really happy but I love to take photographs with that it's it was called the poor man's Hasselblad which was a very well-known top of the range camera now just two more cameras to show you one of my favorites to walk around it is a camera that's not as professional as the f3 it is the Nikon FM3A, which is less professional, but it is an amazing camera, much lighter. I really enjoy it. And if you ask me which is my favorite 
Nikon camera, this one, the F3, FM3A. And finally, let's go to one that I call my little lady, which is my favorite camera ever, and it's this. This is the Rolleiflex 3.5F, and this is a camera from the 60s, and I really, really enjoy this camera. I like it a lot. It's less noisy. It also has the same kind of viewfinder. And it is a camera that I love uh, walking with, the, with it on the streets of Lisbon and taking photos. And it is a very good conversation starter. Sometimes I have people asking me, oh, what's that? Let me see the camera. And we talk about it, so it's fun. So far, nobody tried to steal it from me. And it is an amazing camera. I just wish I had more time to go out and take more photos and I wish I also had more courage to ask some people that I don't know to take their photo. It's something that I need to work on. So if you ask me which is my favorite combo to go on the streets, the Rolleiflex and the Nikon FM3A. So this was a very off topic collection thing, let's go back to the paper and two pens to end up the video. So, this part was about cameras and let me... where is the, the pen? Sorry, the cameras destroyed here my setup. Oops, those are my notes. Um, so, cameras. And what about you? The same kind of... is there anyone with the same kind of hobbies? or pens, cameras and knives, or maybe some other ideas, please let me know on the comments. And finally, let's go for the last topic, which is pen related again, and it is nib materials, but in a way it's related to colors. So, which are your preferences? And I'm, show, I'm going to show this quite fast, I hope. What I'm talking about is, what do you prefer? So, and this is kind of a list that I'm going through. Do you prefer pens like these? Tibaldi, Bononia, Martini Olive, which is a very beautiful pen, a nice writer, that has a steel nib with its natural steel color, or do you prefer a pen with steel nib, with gold color, like this Pelican M200 Anthracite. So, do you have a preference about this, or maybe you prefer a mix? Do you prefer pens with two-tone nibs, like this Vingsung? This is also a steel nib, but it has parts that are silver colored and gold colored. So, which do you prefer? I think I'll go back to auto exposure. Or, you prefer other colors that are not so normal. So, usual colors are the regular steel color or the gold or both, like on the Ving Sung. But, there are also some other variations. I have this Monte Grappa in um, walnut, Montegrappa Fortuna in walnut wood, and the nib is bronze colored, so it's very nice color for a nib and unusual. But there is also the possibility of having the nib instead of being plated, like being coated. And there are some options there. I have these Leonardo Ficina Italiana, Momento Zero Grande, Pura, Arancio Fiamante or Flaming Orange, that has a Yovo nib, which has a black coating to it. Also a steel nib, but it can be black. Or the nib can be, like in this pen, which I'm not sure if it has any brand, green. It's kind of painted with green. Usually these end up coming off the nib. 
and I also have this Everhard Faber, which has a purple MIB, which is also fun. So, about steel, you have these options. I've also seen a yellow MIB that lost the plating, I don't have it. Um, but we can think about other color of other material, and it's this. It's different from the color of steel. Let me bring back the Tibaldi, but this is shiny steel and this is not. This is a matte version, but you can see the color is different, and this is titanium. This is my beautiful... Why doesn't it focus? This is my beautiful William Shakur Titan that has some springiness to the nib. It is made of titanium, the nib, so it has a different color. It has this dull finish and it is a very beautiful nib. So this is also an option. And it is not only of one color. It has a, gold, uh, a golden part there. But let's imagine it is a plain uh, titanium nib. It's the only titanium nib that I have, except for the Parker T1, but the Parker T1, all the pen is made of titanium, including the nib. Or, do you prefer gold nibs? And if you prefer gold nibs, you have several different approaches to it. Let's start with a basic one, like this Parker International Dufold Mosaic Blue. You can have no, not this. Sorry, I made a mistake here. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Uh, what I wanted to go with was the this. Sorry, let me show you this vintage Caveco Special in silver, very beautiful, which has a gold nib, and it is gold colored, so no plating at all. It has its natural color. So, do you prefer this kind of color of the gold? Or do you prefer kind of um, rhodium plated nib that instead of being gold colored, it has a rhodium plating that makes it this kind of color. So all the nib is silver instead of being uh, gold. But maybe you can prefer a two-tone nib like this one. Let me grab both because it makes sense. Or maybe you prefer a two-tone nib that has a different amount of gold and silver. So this one is gold with just a silver arrow. This one is gold all completely plated and this is only the arrow is gold and the rest it is plated in in rhodium. So it is a very different and interesting uh, idea. But you can also opt to like this Parker Premier, which is an interesting pen, the monochrome black. You can coat in ruthenium a gold nib, so you have a very dark nib, which is also a very interesting one. So, there is also this option. There is also another option, which is having a nib made of white gold. And the nib made of white gold is not as silverish as a steel nib or rhodium plated nib. It has more gold color on it, and we have this one, and I also have this Santini Libra, both are white gold. Although, as I told you, they are not as white. Because, let me show you the silver, the rhodium plated Kavec, uh, the rhodium plated Parker, and you can see it has more silver than the other two, but the other two are not as golden as the gold color on this one. So, it's also an interesting uh, possibility to have. And I am the pen that I'm talking about is the Santini Libra Olive that I showed you lots of times before and a Pilot costume 
black stripes, they are interesting pens that give you another level of opportunities. And you have also, I was talking uh, in a, just a few moments ago about the two-tone nibs, like this one. I have this very new Lamy dialogue that has a nib which is gold, it, it is a gold nib which is plated in rhodium and pink gold or rose gold, which is interesting that middle stripe is rose gold and it is also a fun variation and rose gold is very um, trendy today. So it is also an interesting opportunity. Another, just to finish this, there is also another option, is when the nibs, let's go again for this Parker, when you have a rhodium plated nib with this finish and what about getting a nib that is also gold, it is also plated, but it has a frosted finish and it becomes a little different. Or, this is the Marlon Aureus, which is a very beautiful pen. And if you go for the Pilot Bamboo, which is a pen that I also love, and you can have kind of a two-tone because you have a polished part, shiny part, and also a matte part like this one, like a frosted. So these are also all, all of those are very interesting variations that give you a lot of variation to your nibs. So please let me know which kind of nibs do you like. You prefer very simple nibs, if it is um, steel nib, steel color, if it is gold, gold color, or you like this kind of variations, and if you do, which ones, or maybe you're just a very simple person that don't care about that and just use a Parker 51. And because you don't get to see the nib, it doesn't really matter which color it has. So, please let me know. There are lots of more platings today, some painting to the nib. So, let me know what you think about these, which are your ideas, because I really want to know what you think. So, I hope you enjoyed this video. I know it was a little different, I, but I needed to do it. I, I really enjoyed making these videos and so I hope you did enjoy it too. If you did, please don't forget to like and subscribe, keep coming back for more and in 2022 I'll try, if I, even if I make less videos of the other kind, I'll try to make more videos of Friday Night Pen Thoughts because these are the videos that I really, really enjoy. And so, thank you all for watching. Uh, please enjoy this Christmas time and I hope to meet you here on the channel very soon. So, bye.